Hi everyone, welcome to another Procreate tutorial. This is the drawing that we will be completing in today's video. If you are new here, I mainly post Procreate tutorials, so if that is something you are interested in, go ahead and subscribe. Otherwise, before we get started, the only thing that you will need to do is download the color palette that we use and the sketch that I'm including for today's video in case you have a hard time sketching your bunny. So those are linked in the description below. They're totally free to download. For the color palette, just double tap the file that downloads and it'll automatically pop into Procreate so that you can use the same colors as you follow along with the video today. For the sketch, just go ahead and save it to your iPad in your files somewhere to access later in the video. I will also post the canvas dimensions, color profile, and layers needed on the screen and in the description below so that you can use those to set up your canvas. So take a minute to get everything ready and then come back and we will get started. Okay, this is the color palette that we will be working with today. So we have all of our like ground and sky colors and then we have a million different shades of our pink to work on our bunny and then a few more colors at the end for our flowers. So we are just going to first start with like drawing our pretty background with our sky and our ground. Then we are going to sketch the bunny first before we start laying down all the shapes. So we'll just sketch an outline of it. Then we'll draw all the shapes and add the texture and shadows and everything. And then we'll draw the flowers last to kind of complete our picture. So let's just get started. We are going to start by drawing our ground and then our sky as kind of our background. So we are going to be on layer one. We're going to leave our background color white. We are going to grab the first color on the first row of our color palette. And we are going to grab the grunge brush under the textures category. We are going to set that to about 50%. And I'm first just going to draw the ground in this greenish color. So I'm just going to start kind of towards the bottom middle of my picture, maybe like a third of the way up. And I am just going to start in the middle and just draw kind of back and forth in like horizontal motions, getting a little bit bigger and longer as I go. Pushing harder in the middle and then it gets a little lighter on the edges. So I'll just kind of make like a little, you know, horizontal strip there. And we're just going to continue it down a little further, getting like a little skinnier as we go. Like so, so I'll probably end it about there. Okay, and then we are going to draw our sky. So to do that, we are going to go to our layer menu, add a new layer, drag it below our layer one here. So we're behind our green ground. And we are going to grab the second color on the top row of our color palette, our first kind of light blue color, same brush, same size and everything. And we're going to do a very similar thing to make our sky. So I'll just start here on the ground you know, where the top of the ground is, and I will just work back and forth in horizontal motions. And then I'll continue working up quite a ways. And then when I'm doing my horizontal motions, I'll just like go in sometimes and then back out a little further sometimes just to kind of create some, you know, variation to the edges. So it's not just like one big block of color. It's just kind of like a random shape. And then when I get towards the top, I'll kind of fade it out again, like into like a little bit thinner lines to kind of create this nice, like ovaly shape almost for our background. Okay, and then once that shape is mostly laid down, I'm going to go back in with a couple of our darker blues here just to make the sky darker as it gets closer to the ground. So we'll stay on the same layer but we'll grab our next color and line the third one on the top row. And I'll start maybe about at the halfway point with this one and just kind of follow the same pattern. Just adding a little bit of a darker color to this bottom half of our background. And then I will grab the next color and line the fourth one on the top row and I will focus this just right towards the bottom and then up maybe like a quarter of the way on our background as well. So that we just get like a nice little variation from top to bottom. I'm going really light at the edge here to kind of blend everything together. 
Okay, and that is pretty much it for our background. So now that our shapes are all laid down, we can go to our layer menu and we can snap these two layers together so that they're on one layer and then this is our entire background. So then if you wanna make any adjustments, you can. You can click your arrow tool on either uniform or free form and you can like adjust the size or the shape of it if you need to. But it's good to have a good amount of white all the way around. That is kind of the look that we're going for. But I might switch mine to freeform and just widen it a little bit from left to right. Just a little bit. Okay, and we will add more details to the ground later, but we're going to wait until we have our bunny in place to do so. So now we are going to go straight into sketching our bunny. So we are going to go to our layer menu, add a new layer on top of our background layer here that we created. So we're at the top of our layer menu. Grab the last color on the top row of the color palette. It's this really dark gray color. It's the seventh one in line. And we are going to switch our brush to the 6B pencil under the sketching category to sketch our bunny. I have this set to about 50%. So one of the best things about creating a sketch is that we can edit it at any time. We can edit the placement, we can edit the size, we can edit different sizes of the sketch itself to really make things look the way that we want it to. And then we can lay down our colors afterwards. So we are just going to start sketching, you know, in the middle of our picture here, our bunny is going to be like the main focus and take up a good amount of our background here sitting on this hill but just sketch however and wherever you would like and then we can make adjustments later. I will post on the screen my sketch so that you can kind of see the end goal that we are trying to achieve. And if you're having a particularly hard time with sketching, I did include my sketch with the stuff that you downloaded today. So if you need to, you can go to the gear icon in the top left, click add, and then click insert a file and then find it where you saved it and you can import the sketch that way and then everything from the sketch point on will still be your own so that is totally fine if you need to do that so i'm just going to start on the head of the bunny so i'm just going to start kind of in the middle of the sky here to do so and i'm first just going to kind of sketch the head and it's just going to start as like more of a circular shape like so and then it's going to have its nose come off the right side here like a little snout. So I'm just going to kind of extend that there. So that's going to be the main shape of his head. Okay, and then now that we have that, I'm going to switch to my eraser tool, which I always have set to the monoline brush. At about 40% will do. And I'm just going to erase this line on the inside that was the original part of my circle. So we'll kind of just draw and erase as we go to kind of get a nice clean sketch. I will grab my brush again and yeah we just kind of want it to be like pointer on this top edge and then rounder on the bottom where it connects back to his head and then i'm just going to kind of sketch in my face a little bit too so he will just have a pointy nose where we see just like a triangle of it like so on the front and then he will have an eyeball at kind of an angle like a nice oval right kind of in the middle of his face with a little eyebrow that's kind of like a half circle or a little slice of a circle so it's straight on the bottom round on the top at an angle kind of matching the eye and then he'll have a little cheek as well big oval right under his eye like that okay and then we will draw the ears now that we have his face kind of laid out i'm going to draw so you know he's obviously looking this way I'm going to draw his front ear and then his back ear. So his front ear is going to come off like this top left side. We're going to have a nice curve that comes to a point. And then from that point, another curve that comes back. And then his back ear is going to come off like the side of this ear right here. So it's kind of partially hidden behind it. And it's just going to come straight up to a point like this. And then we will see this side more. And it will connect back to his head. Like so. I'm going to grab my eraser tool again and just erase this line on the front ear. So 
the line will stay behind the back ear, but this front ear we will see it, it will kind of like blend in to his head. And then switch back to my pen tool and we'll draw the inside of the ear, just kind of mirroring that shape. Like so. Okay, so all of a sudden we have his head. So that looks great. We can make adjustments later or you can make adjustments now. Whatever works, I'm just going to go ahead and move on to his body. So we are going to start and um, he's going to be looking kind of over his shoulder. So the left side of his head here is going to connect straight with his body. So I'm just going to go from this left side and just kind of go straight down almost with the teeniest bit of a curve here. But it just really kind of blends right in with that left side. And then we're going to go out and kind of make like his belly. And it'll go around on the bottom. And then we'll just kind of start drawing the other side too. So again, he's looking over his shoulder. So his body will cut off like right here now on this side. And it'll just kind of go straight down and curve back to meet his belly again. So that's kind of the start of his body. Okay. Then we're just going to draw in his feet and then see how things are looking. So his first foot will be off this bottom left side here and it's going to just be facing at an angle kind of like this. It's just going to be like a little oval. Okay, and then from this side of his foot, his belly will go kind of down at an angle to the right. So just make sure it's looking like that. And then he'll have another foot here, kind of matching that same angle and size as the first one. Then the back of his foot will connect back to his body. So just kind of round it out there just to extend his body a little on this side. So now I'm going to grab my eraser tool and just get rid of this extra stuff here. And then grab my pen again and this foot here will go in the teeniest little bit into his body and then it will go up and curve around to kind of create like his leg. And it's not going to connect all the way back to his back but just maybe end right there with a little gap like so. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to grab my eraser tool and erase this little part on this foot as well. So this is all just kind of connected. You know, make sure to adjust for his belly down here if you need to. Adjust his feet sizes to match if you need to. And then I'm just going to, his back's a little too straight. I'm just going to kind of add a little bit more like volume to it I guess so that it's not so straight he's gonna be a little chunkier that looks great okay and then I am going to add his tail right off of his butt so just like a little circle right there that's you know partially covered by his butt so we just you know see about two-thirds of it probably and then we're also going to add some little arms in the front. So I'm going to start kind of close to this left side here since we can see like the right side of his back. And then his arms would probably start like, you know, more here in the middle. But again, this left side one will be close to the left side of his body. So I'm going to start kind of right there and just kind of similar to his feet, just like some little oval shaped arms. And then we'll do the same thing on this side. Okay, so now is where we can make some adjustments if we need to. Um, essentially, everything is on the same layer. So the only thing that we need to do really, instead of being able to move things one by one, is we just need to grab our selection tool, 
with freehand turned on, color fill turned off. And then for example, I might make his ears a little bit bigger so I can select just around his ears. Click my arrow tool, set it to either uniform or freeform, however you want to resize it. And I might just make them a little bit bigger and then just kind of reposition them on his head. In fact, I kind of just want even like the back one to be smaller. So I'll just select that one, downsize that a little bit. Things like that. So if you want like his whole head to be bigger compared to his body or you want the body to be smaller, you can select that individually, resize it on its own, you know, kind of whatever you would like to do. You can move things around. I might move my arms, make them a little bit bigger and just kind of place them a little more like central looking. You know, you can rotate things. You can do whatever you need to do. Um, you can also just erase and resketch things. The only issue is like if anything's overlapping, it's harder to adjust for, but that's where you can just kind of resketch things and erase things as you go. I'm going to erase this little left side of like his jaw because that's going to all kind of flow together. And we're just going to see like a little bit of his bottom jaw here where it overlaps with our body. But this part will be like more open. Just keep working at it till you like the way it's looking. I think my bunny looks very cute. So I am going to stop here. You can clean things up a little bit more if you would like. I usually leave my sketches pretty messy, but if you need to go in with an eraser and just really clean things up, feel free to do so. Okay, so now that our sketch is done, we can resize the whole thing all at once. You can adjust it either on uniform or freeform. Like if you need to make him wider or taller, you can do that. But the biggest thing is we just want to adjust his size so that he fits in our picture a little bit more nicely. So I am going to place him like kind of on the ground here. So his feet and his butt are on the ground. The rest of his, you know, body and head is in the sky. But I don't want his ears like going outside of the background that we drew. So just about right here is where I will leave him. So whether you need to resize up or down, go ahead and do so. And then just place him nicely on our picture here. And this is where we will start drawing the actual pieces of his body and stuff. So we are going to go to our layer menu. We are going to add a new layer and drag it below our sketch layer here. Click on our sketch layer. Click the end to open up the menu options and we're going to drag the opacity down a bit to about 40% or so. Make sure we're on our new layer underneath our sketch layer. Grab the first color on the second row of the color palette and we are going to switch to the dry ink brush under the inking category. We're going to set that to about 10% and we're essentially just going to follow the outline of our entire sketch and then fill it in so it's one big pink shape that we'll add all of our details onto. The only thing we won't follow is the tail. We'll add that separately, so just leave that part out. But I'm just going to zoom in here and I'm gonna start on the top of his ear right at the tip and kind of follow that line. Didn't quite get it good enough, maybe about there. Same thing on the other side. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Just do your best to get it as close as you can. I always try to draw kind of quickly to get some nice smooth lines. And then if I'm way off from my sketch or where I want it to be, I'll just undo it and redo it till it looks good. Okay, so then once you're done and everything's connected, go ahead and just fill it all in. Then you can go to your sketch layer and turn it off. Make sure we're still on our pink layer here. And then you can go through and like either fill in any gaps or make any adjustments to any of your lines. Smooth things out a little bit.
Okay, and then once that's done, we can go ahead and turn our sketch back on. But I am going to lower the opacity quite a bit more now. So I'm going to click on the N and drag this down to like 10%. So we just can barely see it still. But now we're going to go ahead and add all the details and textures to our bunny. We're going to do that by adding clipping masks to this main like shape layer that we've created to add all of the details and stuff to make it look like it's supposed to. And so let's go ahead and add our first clipping mask. It's going to just be a layer to add a bunch of texture to our bunny. So add a new layer above our bunny shape, click on it and set it to a clipping mask. Grab the second color on the second row of the color palette and we are going to switch our brush to the 4B compressed charcoals brush under the charcoals category. This is what we'll use quite a bit today to add some texture and details. Let's go ahead and just set it to like 20% to add this texture. So we're just going to add this all over. So I'm just going to literally just drag all over my bunny. And you might not be able to see it on the video, but you should be able to see it on your screen just a little bit. We're just adding a little bit of texture to him is all. Just to kind of get things started. Okay. Now we will add our tummy that will be next. So we'll go ahead and add another new layer, click on it, set it to a clipping mask, grab the next color and line the third one on the second row. And we are going to switch back to our dry ink brush under the inking category. It is still set to about 10% and I am just going to make my tummy here. So I'm just going to start where my leg meets my body and I'm just going to kind of follow this shape all the way around to kind of where it would be even though it goes behind our leg here we'll add our leg back in later so we'll cover this part up but go ahead and just kind of make it to kind of like where it would be and then go ahead and just fill all of this in with our brush so that we get a little bit of texture from our brush as well instead of like dragging and dropping it to fill it in Okay, so that's it for our tummy. If you need to, you can always um, turn your sketch back off and just make sure that things are being filled in and that your edges are nice. And then just go ahead and turn it back on. Now we're going to draw the legs and the arms. So that's going to be on another new layer. So add a new layer, click on it, set it to a clipping mask. And we are going to grab the fourth color on the second row of our color palette, the next one in line. It's a little bit lighter than the one that we just used. And we are actually going to switch back to our 4B compressed charcoal for this. We're going to drop the size way, way, way down to like 2 to 3%. And essentially we're just going to follow the shapes on our sketch. So first our leg here, we're going to start at the top of the leg. Follow this pretty thoroughly. Make sure to push down really hard. Get a nice good line there. And then we're also going to follow like the top of the foot and then just going to kind of let it fade off the front of the foot there. We want a nice thick line like so. We're going to do the same thing with the arms. Again, pushing down pretty hard to get a nice thick line there. And it's just an outline we're going to go back in and do a lot more changes to it but we just really want to cover up any part of our belly so that our arms and leg are on top of it and then we are going to create some shadows underneath them as well that we want to be you know covered up by these lines so that's just the start of them so again you can go ahead and turn your sketch off make sure they look good in terms of the outer edge, that's the one that's most important here is this outer edge. The inner edge we're going to make a lot of changes to. We're going to add um, the base color back in, some highlights and stuff. So we just want a nice good shape to kind of start with. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, he's fuzzy. That's why we're using this brush. So, but make sure that, you know, you like the way things are looking. We'll go ahead and leave our sketch off, so turn yours off if you haven't yet, but make sure that we're still on this arm and leg layer. Grab our original color, the first one on the second row. Same brush, same size, and we're just going to very, very lightly go back in on the inside 
of our shapes. So the right side of our leg line here and then the inside of our arms. We're going to go in very lightly just on the edges to kind of like smooth this out, fade them out a little bit more so they're not so harsh. But we want to leave a nice crisp edge on this outside area. So we're just going to the inside and even like this top a little bit, I might just kind of fade that nicely with this original color going over that a bit. And then down here, we'll really add a lot of this back in. But we do want like the teeniest little bit of a highlight there on his foot as well. And just, you know, so we can still see the shape of it. Okay, so like that looks good for the leg. Going to go in and do the same things on the insides of the arms and then same thing like this top like part of the arm I might go over quite a bit like the whole area just to kind of fade it into the body a little bit better but this outer edge I might leave for the most part alone Okay, that looks a lot better. And then similarly, our leg and arms would have some like, would be kind of highlighted a little bit because they're kind of higher points in our picture. So I'm going to go back in with my third color on the second row, which is the one that we used for our belly. And I'm just going to very lightly kind of follow this same shape here again and just kind of add a little bit of a highlight very, very lightly and very like broadly. I'm just kind of adding a good amount of it just like to this whole top area of my leg just to kind of blend it even further. Add a little bit of like brightness there. Same thing on my foot, just kind of adding it to the bottom of that line I already created. Same thing on my arms, I'm going to kind of add it like towards the tips of my arms, maybe along this left and right side, just a little bit like towards just the tips, like so. Just to add a little highlight there. But again, just keep making adjustments. You can go back in with your original color again, the first one on the second row, if you need to any further, but then just again, kind of go back in with your highlight color again, if you need to. Okay, and that adds like some nice highlights to our arms and legs and just makes it so that we can see them. And I mean, the edges of them would be lighter because that's kind of like where the sun is hitting. So that's kind of why we did it this way. Now we're going to add a little bit of a shadow underneath them to make them pop a little bit more and just because there would be a shadow. So to do that, we are going to add a new layer, drag it below the layer that we already created our arm and leg layer. So it should be right above our belly layer, right in the middle there. We're going to grab the fifth color on the second row of our color palette, a pretty dark pink color. And we are going to, again, use the same brush, same size at two to three percent. And we are going to add a shadow alongside our leg on the inside here. So I'm going to follow the shape of the leg very, very lightly. Follow the shape of the top of the foot. I'm going to kind of create like a little curve at the bottom here where there would just be more shadow cast on the belly. Like so, and this is where it was again very important for us to make those original lines. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to draw these underneath them like we are. And then I'm just going to stop when I get like towards the top of the leg here. Not all the way at the very top of it, but just like maybe right about here. Then we're going to do the same thing around the arms, mainly just like around the bottoms of them. And again, similarly, this is why it was very important to fill in these shapes so well. 
on our previous layer. Okay, so just a little good shadow there. And this is again where you can go back in if you need to. If you if you didn't get these lines, these white lines thick enough to, and you're seeing like your shadow underneath them, you know, go back in and just add some more to our other layer here. This layer that's on top, go back in with your um, either fourth color or the first color, whichever color you need to, to like add more definition there or cover up your shadow more, you know, that is kind of the whole thing that we're doing here. We're going to be making quite a bit of adjustments as we go. So just continue to do so. I am going to go back to my shadow layer and my shadow color, the fifth one on the second row, and we're going to add more to our shadows. So we added a shadow to the leg and the arms, but now we're just going to add some shadows to the rest of him. We're first going to add a shadow on this bottom right area near his, you know, butt and his bottom leg here. Add a nice little shadow there. We'll add a shadow on the bottom of this other foot. Right about there. And then we're also going to add a shadow under his head and by his other ear. But I'm going to turn my sketch back on to see that. So I'll just turn my sketch layer back on, make sure I'm still on my shadow layer. And I'm going to add a shadow right under his chin here. So right kind of on the edge here where the head meets the body, I will start there. I'll make it thicker on the right edge and then I'll just kind of let it like fade and get a little thinner towards the middle. Only extending it about this far. And then I will also add a shadow by this ear. So these ears are on the same layer. So I'm going to add a shadow around this ear just where I can see it. holding my pen pretty upright to get a nice thin lines. Then I'm going to follow the shape of his head. So again, right where this ear meets the head, I want a shadow right on top of that. And then coming up to this next ear, and then we'll kind of just let the shadow fall in there. Okay. That is our main shadow layer. We're going to add a second shadow layer that is just a little bit lighter to kind of help blend things together a little more. So I'm going to go to my layer menu, add a new layer, drag it below the layer that we just created. So we're again right above our belly. We're going to grab the next color in line, the sixth one on the second row, a little bit lighter than the one that we were just using. And I'm just going to essentially create like a second shadow on all this stuff. It's so like we'll start by the ear here. I'm just going to extend the shadow out a little bit further with this like lighter color but darker than our base color so that we just get a little bit more of a shadow but it's not as dark as we were just creating. Same thing here on the neck. Just kind of creating a shadow like down this right side of his body a little bit. Same thing by his butt and his bottom leg here. I'll just kind of create it up a little further than we went before. Getting really light as I get to the edge to really blend it out with my original color there. And then we can even add a little here, maybe a little bit on the belly. Just kind of around everything pretty lightly over here so that I don't mess up what I already did. Again, make sure to just keep turning your sketch on and off and seeing how things are looking. If you need to go in and adjust anything at all, go ahead and do so. But like now I can see this ear here. Looks like it'll look pretty good when we're all done. That looks like nice and sharp. This line looks nice and sharp. So make sure things are looking good. And then we are going to add a little bit of a highlight to everything as well. 
where we want to and I'm going to do that on the same layer that we did our leg and our hands on. So just find that layer, grab the third color on the second row that we used for our belly and we'll use that again here to create just some more highlights all over our bunny. So I am going to add some to the top of his face where the sun would be hitting it. And again, these are just kind of more like broad highlights, kind of like what we just did with our shadows. Like we created our really st strong highlights for our legs and our feet, but now we're just kind of creating some more just like basic highlights. You know, the tip of his ear, both of them. Maybe a little bit like on his other shoulder here. Just kind of very lightly there. Maybe even some just like on his cheek. Very, very lightly there as well. Maybe on the top of his foot. On this other foot here. So again, just kind of some more broad highlights just to kind of add some more definition and things. That being said, let's go ahead and turn our sketch off again. And now is when I would make any other adjustments that you need to um, to our main pieces. We are now going to add our eye, nose, and ear, inner ear area here, plus our whiskers, and then our tail. So we're like mostly done with this body. So if you need to add more shadows, more highlights, if you need to adjust the arm or leg at all, you know, I know that those are very challenging to make look right. So go ahead and do so if you need to. Otherwise, um, he's looking pretty cute. I might add a brighter highlight to the tops of his ears. So I'm still on my like highlight layer. I'm going to grab the fourth color on the second row, the brighter one that we used for our arms and leg. And I am going to add a little bit of that to the tops of his ears as well. Just because I think they would be a lot lighter. I might even add a little bit right on the inside here where the ears meet because this side would be like highlighted a little bit. So boom, right there, I added that. So just kind of make any adjustments, you know, as you see fit, take your time with it. And then we'll add our final details. So I'm going to turn my sketch layer back on. I'm going to add a new layer above all of my bunny layers so far still underneath our sketch layer here click on it and set it to a clipping mask and this is where we'll add our details so let's start with the nose so that is going to be the darkest pink color here the eighth one in line on the second row i'm going to switch back to my dry ink brush under the inking category still at about 10 percent zoom in here on his face and I am just going to make a nice little nose here that's essentially like half of a triangle you know a little flatter on top like more horizontal and then you know longer on the bottom right there then on the same layer I'm going to add the eye and the eyebrow so we're going to just switch to that color it's the one that we use for our sketch so it is the seventh one on the top row this kind of dark gray color. Same brush at 10% and I am just going to make his oval eye here. I'm not holding my brush down, I'm just kind of following my sketch and just moving in a quick motion to get a good shape. But you can absolutely draw an oval shape, hold it down until it turns into a perfectly smooth shape. Click the ellipse button at the top and then you can kind of adjust it and that way you get a nice smooth shape and then you can just fill it in with your brush and adjust the edges if you need to at all like so then i'm going to make my eyebrow as well so a straight line across the bottom like a half moon shape on the top if you need to lower your brush size at all to do so go ahead otherwise that looks good I'm going to make the little twinkle in the eye, which is going to be our bright white color, which is the last one on the second row. I'm going to just zoom in here and make just the tiniest little oval in the top right corner of his eye with that. Okay. 
Then we are going to do the inner part of the ear here. So that is going to be with this fifth color on the second row of the color palette, same dry ink brush. We're just gonna zoom in here. We're going to make this inner ear part following our sketch. Smooth it out nice and good. Then it's kind of like horizontal to our head on the bottom. And then go ahead and fill it in either with your brush or you can drag and drop as well. Either way works. If you need to turn your sketch off just to kind of make sure it's nice and smooth, go ahead and do so. That looks great. I'm going to turn my sketch on just one more time and we are going to make the cheek, which is very, very, very light on my sketch, but right under the eye here. So the cheek color is going to be the seventh one on the second row, right before our really, really dark pink that we used for the nose, the one right before that seventh. We are going to switch back to our charcoal brush, the 4B compressed charcoal brush. We'll increase the size to like three to 4% is all. And I'm just going to focus right here, work in kind of an oval motion, pushing pretty lightly at first, and then maybe a little bit harder to just kind of get it to darken up but so that we get a nice like wispy cheek there. That is so cute. Okay. And then lastly, we're going to create a shadow inside this ear part. So to do so, we are going to go to our layer menu. We're going to continue drawing on this same layer, but we are going to turn on alpha lock. So click on this layer, set it to alpha lock. It still will be a clipping mask. But now we can draw on the same layer without going outside the lines. So we're going to switch to our darkest pink color here, this eighth one on the second row. Same 4B compressed charcoal brush at like 2 to 3%. And I am just going to draw a shadow towards the bottom of the ear here, and you will see it start appearing again only inside our shape, which is the great thing about Alpha Lock. We can draw on this layer without going outside the lines. And it's really helpful for clipping masks because we can't make a clipping mask to this layer because it already is a clipping mask to our other layer. So I am just going to add a little bit of a shadow at the top and bottom and a teeny bit all the way around. So mostly on the top and bottom, but then just the teeniest bit on the edges as well. Okay, then we can zoom out. We can turn off our sketch layer. And this is what we are left with. So this is our adorable bunny. He still needs his tail and his whiskers, and then the flowers will really complete the rest of the picture. So let's just go ahead and continue on, but he's looking great so far. Also, another thing I just wanted to mention is if you need to make any adjustments here, you can do so. If you want to like move the eyes around or resize them at all, like, you know, we were just using our sketch, so... You know, if you think now that it's done and the sketch is off, if you think it looks weird and needs to be adjusted, go ahead and do so. Okay, to add the whiskers, we are going to add those on a brand new layer because we can't have them be clipped to our original shape because they're going to go off of our shape. So, brand new layer on top of everything. Do not set it to a clipping mask. We are going to grab the same color that we used for our eyeball and our sketch, and that is the seventh one on the top row. We're going to switch back to our dry ink brush under the inking category. I have mine set to 10%, but you feel free to change it if you need to, depending on how hard or light you draw and how these turn out. But we are just going to very quickly draw two whiskers coming out of like the side of his face here, you know, either right on top of his cheek or right to the left of it, whatever works for your picture. And I cannot do this straight up and down. So I'm just going to tilt my picture a little bit and I'm going to start right here. And boom, draw like a little whisker like that. And then I'm going to start a little bit lower and maybe a little bit closer to the edge. Draw another really light one. So again, adjust the size of your brush if you need to. Those look good. They're a little too long. But since they look good, I'm just going to click my arrow tool on uniform and just downsize them a little bit. 
That is so cute. Okay, now we're going to draw our tail and our back whiskers on another new layer that will be behind our original bunny shape. So find your layer with the green and blue background. Add a layer right above that so you should be right behind our pink bunny shape. First we'll just draw our back whiskers since we're already on the brush and color that we need. But I'm just going to do essentially the same thing pretending that they're coming out of the other side of his face. And then we'll only see like the top little bits of them like so. Okay and then on the same layer we'll draw the tail. So that will be this second to last color on the second row. So the ninth one in line. It's a very, very light, light, light peachy color. We're going to switch back to our 4B compressed charcoal brush under the charcoals category. We'll set it to about 10%, quite a bit bigger than we have been using. And we're just going to start near his little butt here. And you can turn your sketch layer back on if you need to, if you, you know, want to use that to see where your tail was going to go. And just kind of work in a nice circular motion until you get about the size that you would like. And push down pretty hard so it's nice and thick. But then on the edges it should be a little wispier. And then let's go ahead and turn our sketch back off. And boom, there is our bunny. Might make it a little bit bigger. Adorable. Okay. Now we're going to move on to our grass and our flowers to complete our picture. So let's first draw our flowers. So those will also be behind our bunny. Let's just go right above our background layer with our blue and green on it. Add a new layer above that one. We're going to use the first color on the last row of the color palette. Switch back to our dry ink brush under the inking category. We'll increase the size to maybe 20%. And I'm just going to make four stems coming out from behind my bunny. So I'll draw one here. Just kind of trying to keep the pressure the same. I'll draw one here. A little bit longer. And then just kind of decide like where your flowers are going to go. So I'll have one here. I'll have one here. That works. And then on this side, we'll do another one up here. And a shorter one down here. So something kind of like that for our stems. While we're here, let's go ahead and just add the leaves to them. So I'll start with this first one that I drew. I'll add a leaf down here. Just like two curved lines together, meeting up with our stem and then filling them in. And then on this one, maybe I'll add a leaf in the middle here. And then on this side as well. Just kind of whatever you end up with. So I ended up with two leaves on the bigger stems and then one on each of the smaller ones. That looks good. I tried to keep them all roughly the same size, but they're not perfect, but that's okay. Okay, now we'll draw the actual flowers themselves. We'll draw those on a new layer right above our stem layer here. Grab the second color on the last row of the color palette and we'll use the same brush, same size. And we will just draw our very basic flower shape here, like a five petal flower that we have all probably drawn our whole lives. So right at the top of the stem here, I'll start and I'll just do boop, two, three, four, five, and then go ahead and just fill that in. So I just try to keep them roughly the same size. That looks good. You know, some of them are bigger than others, but that's okay. And then I will do the same thing here. Fill it in. And if you ever just need to kind of go around again to adjust some of the petals, that's okay. Make them bigger, make them, you know, longer, kind of whatever works.
Okay, so something kind of like that. And then the biggest thing is just that we need to kind of like center them on our stems maybe a little bit more. Uh, for example, this top right one looks really good and I do like the size of it. However, I'm going to grab my selection tool on freehand with color fill turned off and I'm just going to select around this bottom right one. Click my arrow tool to select it. Make sure it's set to uniform and I'm just going to downsize it a little bit and then kind of just recenter it on the top of my stem a little bit better. And then if you need to make adjustments to any of the other ones, go ahead and do so. This one, I'm just going to actually rotate it a little bit so that like the stem intersects two petals, whereas before it was like just intersecting one. That just kind of bothers me. I'm gonna just place it there. And then this one, same thing. I'll rotate it a teeny bit and just kind of readjust where it's sitting. And then again, resize them as you go if you need to as well, but those look pretty good. Now we're just going to add the centers of them on the same layer. So just switch to our third color on the last row of the color palette. Same brush, same size, same layer. And I'm just going to add a little circle starting in the middle and just working out in a circular motion until I get a good size. On all of them like so. Okay, and that is it for our flowers. If you want to make any further changes, you can absolutely do so. Um, you can select both the flower layer and the stem layer and move things and resize them individually. So for example, we have the flower layer selected in blue, slide right on the stem layer to select them both. You can click the arrow tool to select both layers all at once and like resize them, move them around, or with both of them still selected on the layer menu, you can grab your selection tool and you can fully select around one of them, like so, and you can move it on its own. You can like rotate it, you know? So if you need to just make any adjustments that you think will make your picture look better, go ahead and do so. I might select both of my smaller ones and just rotate them out a little bit more, you know? So something kind of like that, whatever you'd like to do there. Otherwise, we will move on to adding our grass, and I'm just going to do that on a new layer right above my blue and green background layer. So I'll add a brand new layer right there. Grab my first color on the last row of the color palette again. Same dry ink brush. Same 20%. You can maybe lower it to 15 if you need to, just depending on how hard you push down naturally. But I am just going to kind of go through and add some little blades of grass throughout the ground, just in little clusters, different sizes, different directions. Literally just like a few, just like that. And then we are going to add a little bit of a shadow to our ground where our bunny is. So now that our bunny is complete and he's set and he's done, we are going to add a shadow underneath him so we're just going to go back to our main blue and green background layer. We're going to find our two greens at the top here, our two ones that we didn't use. So this first one was our base green color. We'll grab the next one, which is the fifth one on the top row. And we are going to switch back to our grunge brush under the textures category that we used originally for our background. And we're just going to set that to about 30%. And I am just going to add this darker green just all under my bunny and kind of just around him. Going out a decent amount so that we can add the darkest green in even closer. So, you know, go out a good ways around his tail, around his body, just kind of everywhere near him. Like so. And then we will grab our darkest green, the last one on the top row, sixth in line. And we will just do the same thing, just way closer to him. So you can, again, uh, you can decrease the size of your brush if you need to, but I'm just kind of staying really close to him and pushing pretty lightly to get a nicer shadow there, like so. So once that is done, that is it for our drawing today. So I hope you had fun. If you did, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more tutorials from me in the future. If you would like to share your drawing on Instagram, I would love to see it. So go ahead and post it and then tag me so that I can check it out. While you're there, go ahead and give me a follow so that you can see what I'm working on next. Thanks for watching.